red algae. So as you see, red algae is nothing but the algae with the red color. And the red color is because of phycoerythrin, the pigment, the accessory pigment that masks the chloroplast, you know, the chlorophyll uh, molecules, which is green in color. So the red algae is belongs to of rhodophyta. And uh, traditionally, if you classify the plants in archaeplastida, we have seen that in our earlier video, the archaeplastida definition include the rhodophyceae. But if you say the plants as something belongs to viridae plantae, then no, viridae plantae is only for green algae plus embryophytes, that is the land plants, uh, in which glaucophytes and uh, red algae are not involved, uh, not included, right? So the red algae actually belongs to Archaeplastida, as you see, it's very near to the, uh, the green algae, and uh, it is the product of the primary endosymbiosis, not the secondary endosymbiosis like. Uh, the brown algae you know the red and green algae are really related uh, there are a lot of interesting uh, uh, you know the uniqueness of this red algal lineage there are no motile gametes or spores in any of its life cycle uh, that is really really interesting characteristic and there are secondary adaptation we will come to in a short while there are no centriores uh, in this uh, you know the algal cell uh, you know, the, the century or for the microfibrils uh, for karyokinesis as well as cytokinesis. And the, th the thylakoid membranes uh, have no uh, stack, the stroma, you know, it is completely unstacked thylakoids if you look at the ultrastructure of the chloroplast, you know, chloroplast. And of course, the chloroplast have got uh, two membrane, just like the case of the green algae, not three or four membranes like the product of the secondary endosymbiosis. This is a product of the primary endosymbiosis, remember. And the sugar, uh, the, the carbohydrate is stored as Floridian starch rather than, uh, you know, the normal starch. The Floridian starch is only amylopectin. There is no amylose involved and the amylopectin itself is highly branched. You know, that is the main characteristic of this uh, particular Floridian starch. The name Floridian is uh, from Floridiophyceae, one of the very important class of the, the red algae, mostly marine, you see. And its life cycle is also very interesting. It is triphasic. Uh, we have seen that in the green algae, uh, you know, it's, it usually have only two uh, phase of the life cycle. So as the embryophytes gametophyte or sporophyte so here in this case the the red algae have got three phase so there are two kinds of sporophyte carposporophyte tetrasporophyte plus gametophyte so there are three phases in its life cycle that is really inter interesting you know? so and the fertilization of the red algae is usually internal you know it's not external the gametes doesn't release to the seawater and get mated you know the fertilization doesn't happen outside but it's actually inside its algal thallus itself that is very unique feature of the, the red algae you know and might be an adaptation because of the non-motile spore remember just now i told you that the spores are non-motile and if this non-motile spores get released to the seawater finding uh, the uh, spore of the alternate uh, you know the, uh, the opposite sex is really tricky it's not possible right if the spores doesn't actually if it falls down with the gravity then how can the fertilization be happening so most probably it is an adaptation the internal fertilization is an adaptation and uh, of course the red algae is really important economically uh, perhaps the most economically important among all algal uh, you know algal divisions are the, the rhodophyta uh, because the edible algae the porphyra is the most expensive algae in the world because of its huge demand in nori industry you know and sushi industry and uh, as well as onigiri all these are japanese food and usually it is uh, comes you know it comes with uh, the wrap of the porphyra the red algal uh, the red seaweed which has you know which is being commercially cultivated in uh, in japan as well as many other countries because of its high cost you know and uh, of course there are so many industrial applications too for example agarophytes like gracilaria uh, gelidium all these things are agarophytes so agarophytes are algae which uh, which is used for commercial uh, commercial production of the agarose and agar agar you know it is agar is used for bacteriological cultivation in uh, biotechnological industries and microbiological labs you know agar is a, it's a very important medium right for bacterial cultivation so as uh, you know marine agar if you're working with marine bacterium right and a purified version of agar is known as agarose 
the agarose plus agaropectin is what is uh, in, what is present in agar and if you purify this agar to form agarose and of course you know agarose is a really expensive component which is used in biotechnological industry especially if you work with uh, dna molecules you know agarose gel electrophoresis is really important right and a few grams will cost you around 50000 rupees no? 500 grams of sigma aldrich it's really expensive agaro uh, you know agar agarose is an expensive especially high pure agarose is really expensive you know and agaropectin too and caraginophytes uh, you know caraginophytes like capophycus or hypnia are used for the production of the kappa caraginan which is a, the food addictive you know so you add on to the food to give it a typical gel like jellifying uh, you know uh, uh, potential like pudding or ice cream you know you can see or gel itself right all these are basically uh, uh, kappa caraginan which is uh, absolutely non-toxic and more than that there are several studies that says that this kappa caraginan or gel jellifying or agar those kind of chemicals are really good for the gut microbiome you know uh, bacteria love this kind of uh, insoluble things like fiber isn't it and of course that is how the agar came in right so much before the agar came in the biotechnological industries agar has been used in uh, you know in the east asian food and that is how the discovery discovery of agar for uh, biotechnological application itself is uh, serendipity uh, you know it is basically the uh, the talk or uh, you know the gossips about uh, uh, the, the culinary innovations you know the east asian inspired culinary practices in germany you can check it out it's a very exciting story so those are the, the main uh, alkyl products and you see that the another important feature of the red algae is that it has got a connective pit plug and pit plugs are basically a cell to cell connection you know pit junctions and pit plugs right so as you see that the, this uh, these are the cells as you see this is a schema and these are the electron microscope of the cells so various cells and there is a connection of one cell to another so these are known as pit connection and inside the pit connection there is a plug so this pit plugs give the structural uh, you know uh, structure the, the shape or structural integrity to the, the red alkyl thallus right so and also used for the diffusion of the, the stuff from one cell to another cell right that is what this uh, pit plugs are so pit plugs are found only in uh, in the red algae the rhodophyte so there is a uh, there is a synapomorphic character for the red algae lineage and another exciting red algae is uh, cynidiosison morel so this particular algae is a living fossil uh, it's an extremophile uh, which has been adapted to high sulfur acidic hot spring look it's very hot and it's high sulfur containing acidic uh, environment where usually the eukaryotes cannot survive and this particular algae the red algae got its ability to survive in such an extreme environment because of a uh, uh, horizontal gene transfer from bacteria you know uh, purple sulfur bacteria that is what the new uh, study says so this kind of clock shaped structure is uh, is how this algae looks like and uh, yeah this is a uh, uh, you know media report nature as well as the hindu reported this media in 2017 which is uh, you know of course for around five years back so oldest fossil algae found so the fossils of the oldest algae found were do you know here in india in madhya pradesh and up you know the chitrakoot region you can see that this is a x-ray tomographic picture you know so that's that's very interesting so uh, it's it's basically india has the world's oldest algae fossil which is approximately 1.2 billion years old it's really old fossil uh, i mean it has been further gone back it's basically 1.6 billion years old uh, fossil of uh, uh, of this particular algae you know it is uh, thought to be an algae you know it's basically you know the, it's it's like uh, as you can see that the thread like form of the algae is Rafadzamia chitrakutensis. So this is a uh, this is a study from India, but unfortunately, it's no Indians are involved. It's a it's a Swedish team from Swedish the Stockholm National, uh, you know the, the Natural History Museum. So this is a Swedish study published in a very high back journal called Plus Biology, you know. So that has been reported in the Nature. It, this uh, discovery happened uh, 2017, you know. So the very old fossil. 
and perhaps the oldest non eukaryote is also uh, an algae which is now believed to be a red algae you know uh, japania spiralis that is the name of this algae japania spiralis you can see that the worm like tubular algae so it's a multicellular algae you know so that is what the oldest fossil of uh, any non eukaryote which is approximately 2.1 billion year old you know in the iron formation right that is also very interesting and of course the red algae includes so many beautiful coralline algae so coralline algae means uh, it's basically uh, the algae that belongs to corallinales uh, of floridiophyce so corallinales is basically coral coral reef forming algae algae which forms the bed of the coral reef you know and this is encrusting algae it looks like rock because it has got calcium deposits you know especially calcium carbonate and because of this calcium carbonate deposits that gets dissolved when the ph goes low that means ocean gets acidified these algae are on a on the risk of extinction because of ocean acidification uh, a consequence of the climate change which i told you earlier right and this algae plays crucial roles in reef building you know the building of the the coral reef as well as fouling so fouling is basically uh, you know because of the uh, attachment of this kind of algae on the ship's hull and other uh, offshore structures and there is a visible drag in its movement you know so the ships actually slows down because of fouling so you need to get rid of this algae uh, you know as well as the barnacles and other uh, you know encrusting organisms from the ship's hull right so coralline algae this is coralline nails you know this is uh, corallina officialis so this is a, a very interesting kind of algae which doesn't actually even looks like a you know plant it looks like a coral reef uh, you know it's it's very hard you know it's like a rock but it's basically it's a living algae you know and it's it remains one of the poorly studied groups among the algae the corallina algae very less people are working because of the monetary difficulty on working on this algae as well as its taxonomy all these are uh, very important for aquarium as well so bisophyllum is another example of the coralline algae look at that it doesn't even have the red color you know it looks brownish but yeah it is a, it's a red algae so coming to the algal phylogeny you can see that there are three main groups of the algae the group one is of these two groups floridiophyce and bangiophyce uh, usually they call it as BF, you know, the, the taxonomists call this clade as a BF clade, Bangiophyce and Floridiophyce. So these two clades are really important marine algae, uh, you know, the seaweeds, the red algal seaweeds uh, or belongs to most of these red algae or red seaweeds belongs to Floridiophyce. So this some some of the important members of Floridiophyce common here in India include Gracilaria, Gratlopia, Hypnia, Capophycus, Eucuma, Galaxiura, Dichotomeria, Acanthophora, all these are examples of the Floridiophyce. Coming to Bangiophyce or Porphyridiophyce, Porphyra is member. So scientists have uh, no consensus with the, uh, with the exact taxonomic position of the Porphyra. It could be Bangiophyce or some group of taxonomists say that not really Bangiophyce but it's Porphyridiophyce. Right. And now coming to uh, another one which is not really clade but it's a basal position of this algae uh, uh, that belongs to the same one major clade. You can see that this is paraphyletic, right? Assemblage of the algae uh, that include Rhodellophyce, Porphyridiophyce, Stylonematophyce, and Comsopogonophyce. So there are several members of this of uh, uh, this one. So as you can see that Porphyridiophyce, Porphyra is a member, Rodella is a member of Rodellophyce, uh, Stylonematophyce, Stylonema is an example of this uh, particular uh, group, and Comsopogonophyce, Comsopogon, which is a freshwater algae, as well as Erythrocladia. So you know Erythrocladia is also found in uh, Erythrocladia is also found as uh, epiphytic algae with other kinds of brown or red or green algae. You know, cyanidinium is an example of the cyanidiophyceae. So cyanidiophyceae is extremophile, you know, so that is what the cyanidium is about, right? So this is an example of the erythrocladia, which is found on growing on the uh, cladophora, right? This is our own picture from our lab. So this is an erythrocladia, which is an epiphytic algae as well. 
So as I told you, uh, there are several of agarophytes important, commercially important algae, which are red algae. All these pics are taken by me here in the coast of India. You know, you can see that Gratilopia felicina. So this is a red algae. So as Gracilaria corticata, very important for agar production. And do you know there are several algae-based industries down south as well as in uh, some industries are in Gujarat state as well. But majority of these industries are in the Tamil Nadu. You know, so agar industries and caragino fight, uh, caragino industries, uh, caragino fights that is used for the production of kappa caragina. The, the food addictive include eucuma, hypnia, and kappa ficus alverazi, out of which most of the commercial production is by this kappa ficus alverazi. Earlier, I told you this one is also known as Pepsi Pussy. Uh, because PepsiCo is uh, the company which invested a lot of money on cultivation of this algae, which is still uh, undergo, you know, it is uh, still uh, in practice uh, near the shores of Kanyakumari. If you ever go to Kanyakumari, you can see that. And Pasi means seaweed in, in Tamil, you know, Pepsi Pasi, <laughs> Kapaficus alvarazi, right? And uh, yes, so we just uh, uh, drafting this particular paper on new uh, two new species of hypnia from Indian coast, Gujarat as well as from Tamil Nadu. The first one is hypnia indica and the second one is hypnia bullaita. So the paper is almost accepted in Botanica Marina. So maybe in next one week it will be formalized, right? So we are really excited uh, to to uh, reveal, you know, the, the species discoveries of two very important caracinophytes, hypnia. Uh, indica and Hypnia bullata. So another uh, endemic seaweeds, the red algal seaweeds uh, of the Andaman Islands include Dichotomeria. You can see that it's you know it is very gel-like Dichotomeria, very soft. And Galaxiura rugosa. So Galaxiura uh, doesn't even looks like an algae. If you touch it, you really feel that it's an animal. You know, a soft coral like an animal. But no, it is not really animal. It's a, it's an algae. You know, it's very interesting Galaxiura rugosa. It's, it's beautiful too, you know, it's very soft. And this is how the porphyra looks like. Of course, this is ulva, but this one is porphyra, you know, so ulva. So porphyra is just like ulva, it's monostromatic, uh, you know, uh, I mean, it's like monostroma, right? Monostromatic, uh, the red algae, mono, uh, this particular porphyra. So porphyra is, you can find porphyra. This picture is from Kollam coast of uh, Kerala. You know, you can find porphyra in India, but we don't really cultivate it, right? But of course, it's the most expensive algae in the world. Uh, this is used for onigiri. Onigiri is the triangular shaped rice uh, wrapped in this uh, porphyra sheets. Uh, you know, inside there is, uh, you know, umeboshi. So basically, ume is uh, uh, the cherry, the Japanese uh, uh, tree bearing berry is basically so this berry uh, the pickled berry is the inside this uh, onigiri i love this onigiri and i i miss the food you know it's been many years i've been to japan i was there for five years you know for my phd so if you look at the life history or life cycle of the porphyra as i told you the red algae life cycle has got three phases you know two kinds of uh, sporophyte phase banki as well as porphyra have got very similar life cycle and the salient features are the life cycle is heteromorphic triphasic alternation. Heteromorphic means these stages have got different morphology. And triphasic, uh, as I told you, there are three phases. And alternation means that uh, there is a gamut, uh, you know, there is a diploid and haploid phases. So it, it, it actually uh, alternates between these two, uh, you know, genotypes. It's monoecious. Monoecious means both the sex organs are found in the same plant, like hermaphrodite. You know, gametophyte dominant. That means that what you see, the the uh, you know microscopic algal thallus is gametophyte, not sporophyte. The sporophytes are microscopic, and the fertilization is internal, like human beings. You know, internal fertilization. I told you it's an adaptation uh, because the the gametes are uh, non-motile. You see. Uh, both kinds of gametes are normal. So coming to the life cycle, let us start with the gametophyte, the, the plant, you see, it's a gametophyte dominant, right? So inside the thallus of this gametophyte of Banchia or porphyra, you can see that some sections have this carpogonia, uh, the female uh, reproductive organs, and some sections have got spermatia. So spermatia is nothing but the non-motile spores, 
you know and the spermatia gets released and goes into the carpogonia to uh, you know to have fertilization so fertilization happens inside the carpogonia right and that leads to the formation of the so-called carposporophyte so carposporophyte is basically a multicellular stage inside growing inside the carpogonia of the gametophyte you know so even the carposporophyte stage is inside the gametophyte stage you see so this carposporophyte once it gets matured it releases a carpospore you see so the moment the carposporophyte forms inside this carpogonia it becomes deployed you know the gametophytes are haploid but carposporophyte onwards it's deployed to an you see so this carpospores as well as the spermatia both are non motile there is no flagella so once this carposporophyte get matured it releases the carpospore right so which is non motile spore which actually goes down because of the gravity in the ocean and then gets settled down various substrata but usually it doesn't grow except on the shells you know uh, like barnacles or oysters or clams those kind of shell uh, it can grow it can get attached to the shells because of the uh, you know because of the stereotypic uh, you know interaction the steric interaction uh, sub molecular structure if you look at this molecular structure the topography then you can see that the only the shells are the suitable substrata for its growth so on the shell you can see that this small growth which is again some microscopic growth so those this phase is known as conchocellus phase or which is actually a tetrasporophyte you know tetrasporophyte second stage you see of the uh, sporophyte stage the two kinds of sporophyte carposporophyte which is inside the carpogonia then it get released carpospores get released to form tetrasporophyte which is on growing on the, the shell see shells you know so this tetrasporophyte uh, which is also known as conchocellus phase because conco as in conch the shell you know so conchocellus gets uh, you know this tetraspores get released which is uh, uh, which is a haploid uh, to form the gametophytes remember gametophytes are uh, you know there are no male and female gametophytes just one plant because it's a mono issues you know so that actually completes the life cycle uh, before this particular life cycle was revealed uh, it was thought the conchocellus was thought to be a separate algae you know but now we know that it's not a separate algae it's a part of a life cycle of this banka and porphyra you know so that's very very exciting discovery that uh, the kathleen mary drew baker she's uh, a very famous uh, nine, you know a 20th century british scientist uh, phycologist so she is the one who is credited of solving the life cycle of this porphyra very important i told you very commercially extremely important uh, the red algae and because of her contribution in revealing the life cycle that actually enabled the Japanese to cultivate the porphyra earlier uh, Japanese could not be able to cultivate it they, they could only able to harvest you know uh, they could only able to gather it uh, on the rocky coast that is why it, it was super expensive but after this life cycle got revealed uh, now that the Japanese can commercially cultivate it and need not be in the shell now that vinyl uh, you know, sheets are available for cultivating this porphyra and that uh, contribution of this uh, lady scientist uh, Catherine uh, has actually uh, you know uh, 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 revolutionized the algal uh, farming you know the seaweed farming the porphyral culture in Japan to such an extent that she is now regarded as uh, you can see that umi no haha umi means sea no means of haha haha means mother you know the mother of ocean uh, this kathleen mary and even there are several monuments dedicated to this uh, scientist the famous british scientist which no, not many people know about kathleen also other than those who who are actually into the seaweeds you know or the japanese world the seaweed plays a major role this is a wood block painting you see the japanese love this kind of wood block painting a painting on the wood block you see 
So yeah, that is uh, it's very interesting, isn't it? Kappa ficus or UQM, I told you, Kappa ficus and UQM are um, you know very important uh, you know for caraginophytes. These are for cultivated for caraginan, right? The production of caraginan. So this belongs to gigotinales. Alternation is isomorphic. So the stages have the same kind of uh, you know the uh, appearance, the morphology is same. Dioecious that means a male and female separate. Fertilization is internal, like you know most of the other red algae, the fertilization is internal. Fixer off bottom monoline is used for the cultivation of the capophyca. So mostly the red algae, the habitats are uh, the benthic. You know, uh, not really too deep, but in the photic zone on the coastal region, you know, the algae can grow on, uh, you know, uh, always submerged. Even in the low low tide, it's actually submerged. It's not really intertidal seaweed, you know, except uh, porphyra. Some species of porphyra are intertidal. But other than that, most of the the red algae are subtidal, and that is why uh, off bottom monoline cultivation is used for this kind of algae. So for this uh, ficus so or you can see that gametophyte are separate, separated into males and females and the female have got a section uh, you know the reproductive organ called trichogyne in which the, the male gametes gets released and uh, fertilization happens which is basically internal fertilization you know. So after the fertilization inside this trichogyne uh, a structure called corp, you know, cystocarp grows in. So cystocarp is the structure where uh, car carposporophyte is housed. So you see that carposporophyte is uh, diploid while gamete, gametes are haploids. You know? So the, this cystocarp containing uh, you know, carposporophyte gets matured and the next Kind of uh, non motile spore called carpospores get released, just like in the case of porphyrin pangaea. And this carpospores again have deployed. This carpospores get settled and it develops into tetrasporophyte. Look at here tetrasporophyte morphology and gametophyte morphology are identical, and that is why it is an isomorphic alternation of generations, right? And this tetraporoph uh, tetrasporophyte. Uh, gets matured and then meiosis happens to release tetraspore. So here the tetraspores are haploid, you know, while tetrasporophyte is a diploid 2N, while tetraspores are haploid. And these haploid tetraspores get, you know, uh, developed into respective male and female gametophytes to complete its life cycle. So this is how the kappa ficus and eucuma life cycle is but by the way uh, the life cycle seems quite complicated but don't worry the cultivation of kappa ficus and eucuma is really simple because look at here fragmentation is supported so any stage tetrasporophyte or gametophyte if you actually take out a little bit of the thallus fragment and this fragment actually grows to good size and you can continue this cultivation for many generations by just by fragmentation you know so you don't have to uh, you know this uh, sexual life cycle you don't have to rely on for the commercial cultivation you can just rely on the sexual mode the clonal propagation by fragmentation that is the advantage of this uh, kappa ficus cultivation you see coming next is gracilaria uh, which belongs to gracilariales uh, uh, the alternation is isomorphic triphasic, just like the earlier example of Capophagus and Eucuma. You know, isomorphic, same morphology. Uh, it's dioecious, again, it's very similar to the Capophagus. Uh, the male and female gametophytes are separate. Fertilization is internal, so it's almost identical. You can see that gametophyte, male and female, get, you know, the male, of course, get released, uh, the gametes or, you know, the, the, the sperm. Get released, which is non motile. Internal fertilization happens on the female thalli, and inside the cystocarp, the carposporophyte gets matured to release a carpospore. You know, the carposporophyte generation onwards is deployed, right? Carpospore is, of course, is deployed. That develops into tetrasporophyte, is identical in the morphology, just like the gametophyte, you know, and this tetrasporophyte. Uh, when gets mature, it releases the tetraspore. So during this maturation and getting released, this tetraspore formation is a, a reductive uh, cell division. That is, meiosis is happening as well as sex determination. 
So some tetraspores are male, some tetraspores are female that gets developed into respective male and female gametophytes to complete its life cycle. So this is the red algal uh, you know, life cycle in summary as well as the commercial importance of the red algae. And um, yeah, thank you for watching.